Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Pastor, I started my Christian experience asking men of God questions. Why what I read here was not working. I asked questions. They gave me theological answers. They gave me emotional answers. They gave me answers that were communication of anger. I asked why the sick were not healed. I asked why the oppressed were not delivered. I asked why a man of God will open a ministry and nobody will come. There are 7.2 billion people on earth. How can you claim Jesus is in a place and no one wants to hear? Jesus went to the mountain, crowds followed him. Something must be wrong. I ask questions. We watch our loved ones die. We, we go around them and try to pray what you know to be prayer. And they die like that and we say it's the will of God. I said, no, something must be wrong. I saw people poor and broke and struggling and nobody could answer it. And I said, Lord, you cannot send me like this. I need answers. What? I don't want to join the queue of frustrated people pretending they have results when nothing is working. Lord, I want to pray for a man and he will know Jesus came to the scene. I don't want to be competitive. I don't want to fight. You've got to put something upon my life that can answer the question of people. Pay attention because your life is about to change. Zara toka pariatashia. Be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. I told you there are angels. I will begin the teaching tonight sharing my encounter with Jesus. Listen to me very carefully. I asked questions. I read books about men and women who did mighty things. Revivals from the Bible and the early church age. I read how men move mountains. Hebrews 11 says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Women received their dead back to life. That is drama when you speak this in our generation. Because there's no experience to relate with. I appreciated what the men of God were doing. I appreciated their sincere desire. But I knew even them had questions they were asking. Something was wrong somewhere. Satan walks up and down our streets as if Jesus lied that he died. We preach it and he helps us preach it. Mocking what we claim to be the blessings of being in Christ. So many talk without result. I ask questions. Just like you have been asking. The worst part of it is that when I started ministry as a man of God, I don't know whether you believe it or not, but demons used to press me. I was moving in the anointing, but I was still oppressed. I couldn't tell anybody because we have been trained to keep quiet and act as if nothing is happening. It was not just that they were pressing me, pastor. I saw them. They came into my room like I'm seeing you. I shouted Jesus because I was taught to shout it. I shouted it like a charm, like a genie. It didn't work. They vetoed what it was to be that name. That means something was wrong with the theological teaching I've been taught. Because the Bible says if that name is mentioned with a certain understanding, something should happen. I did it. It didn't work. You are amazing, dear Lord. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Oh, 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 oh. Listen. I went to the hospital.
that to pray for the sick. It was as if I was wasting my time. Even me, I knew they would not be healed. As I prayed for them, I felt guilty when people packaged seeds to give me. I said, for what? I just failed to bring Jesus to the scene. Why are you honoring me? The desperate people who brought me believing that my appearance meant the showing up of Jesus. Because that's what I told them. I said, no way. I can't be lying for a lifetime. It says, through desire. Proverbs 18 verse 1. A man having separated himself. Let me tell you how God leads men. When God wants to take you to a deeper level, let me tell you, there is a system in the kingdom with which God lures men to intimacy. He will open you up to a bit of the experience you desire and hide it back. And it will force you to seek him. Listen. Please, men of God, with all due respect, hear me. You go to a church and all of a sudden you see the power of God manifest. Even you, you don't know what you did. God is luring you with that experience to seek him and gain mastery over that dimension. Because you will go for another meeting and not see it again. You cannot reproduce it. He said, he that strives for mastery must strive lawfully. So there are many dimensions that happen in the body of Christ by chance. I can tell you it's by chance because we cannot reproduce it. So we only hope it happens. You never were sweating up and down to sit on that seat. There is a system that makes you sit well. You have mastered it so well you can sit down comfortably. Can that happen for the sick? Can that happen for the oppressed? Can you prophesy on someone and say in the name of Jesus, I change your story. And invoke the powers in the spirit to change his story. Or will he just hope it happens? Members run elsewhere, get testimonies and come back and say we are the ones who did it. Even us, we know we are not the ones who did it. It's a new season for this ministry. It's a new season for you. So I began to search. I studied the Bible. I bought books, brothers and sisters. I pursued God like a matter of life. I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for fame. I was not looking for name. I was not looking for miracles. I wanted him like Job. I said, God, you have to appear to me and answer these questions by yourself. I would get up and go to the dam in the morning till night and stay there and say, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. Days turn to weeks. Weeks turn to months. I said, you've got to. You can't send me like this. People have asked me questions I could not answer. Please give me a message. I don't want to copy what somebody said and not be able to defend it. Speak to me. Listen. My hunger got to a point where I knew if God did not show up, I would die. Not because he would kill me. There would be absolutely nothing else to do with my life. I was determined not to move until he showed up. When you seek him, you will find him. The problem is we don't seek him with all our hearts. Look at this. If I have this watch I'm wearing, if you consider this to be a nice watch, sorry I'm using an example not to just get your attention here. If you consider this watch to be expensive, if you're running and it falls down, will you stop and pick it? Of course, because you feel it costs you money. Correct? If you are running and you are in a hurry for a meeting and five naira flies out of your pocket, will you stop for it? So I see the way you treat Jesus and your pursuit for him. As though, let me try. If it works, no problem. I see where you have kept him. You never find him that way. The jealousy of God was designed to make him respond only when all of you seeks for all of him. That was my experience. Please listen. One night, something happened to me. I was not even praying. I was not even fasting. All of a sudden, brothers and sisters, my room disappeared and a stranger walked in. 
Jesus himself. I have seen him. It's not a, it's not a story book. It's not a historical fact. When Jesus walked up to my room, I will tell you some things that would disturb you. Number one, I knew he did not belong. I, there were certain things I knew by myself. I knew that Jesus did not belong to any church. One. Two, I knew that many pastors did not know him. I'm not, it's not an insult. I'm not saying they are fake. I'm saying many pastors did not know who they were talking about. And it's not your fault. Even Isaiah had that problem. Brothers and sisters, he was standing before me. I was like a speck of dust on the ground. I don't even know what part of him I was looking at. I still don't know how his face looks like. Believe me when I tell you. Exalted high above the worship of the people of the earth, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. My eyes have seen the King. Is the Lamb upon the throne who reigns forever? He never opened his mouth to speak to me. But I was knowing many things at once. How do I describe this now? When you meet him, he doesn't have to talk for you to receive. If he is the word, everything about him is speaking to you. His mouth is not the only weapon of communication. The light from him speaks to you. And I saw him. Do you know everything that he said to me, it took years before I understood. Looked at me and all he did was to lift his right hand. He stretched it towards me and a light. It's like taking the sun, if you can imagine, and putting it inside an ant. How I did not die is a question I will ask him when we get to heaven. Brothers and sisters, when he put that light, he looked at me and walked away. I was like a madman for one year. I couldn't relate with the things of earth again. When you hear the writer says, When all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you. It was not a special number. It was a man's experience. I walked like a madman. I lost the ability to be afraid. Nobody prayed for me. I couldn't be afraid. It was not like, you know how you panic? No, no, no. It didn't happen again. And I said, my God, something had happened to me. Do you know, part of the assignment he gave me, in later years, as I would have several other encounters, was that everywhere I traveled to, that light he released upon me, I must extend it to the people. That's what produces the miracles that you hear. That's what produces the signs and the wonders that you hear about. That's why there is no man that can take this glory for himself. From that time, like Paul, I could say, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. One time, I had another encounter. And the Lord said to me, he said, Son, from today, I give you my presence as a gift. And all of a sudden, my eyes were open. He said, there is an angel that will walk with you. He said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. Never read that. He said, his presence will produce the signs, the wonders, the miracles. To the glory of the Lord. Everything you have heard about what this young man is doing is because of this. I took out time to share it with you so that there is no hope of glorifying myself and so that you will know the basis. You will first appreciate your pastor with all your heart. 
See, when you honor a man, you don't honor a body, you honor a sacrifice that has afforded God to manifest certain possibilities in certain dimensions. That's what you honor. Hallelujah. And tonight, maybe not everybody, but I know somebody is going to take something here.